Appreciate you hitting the button. Welcome to the How to Hustle podcast with Hype. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at I am Hype. That's H Y M P E. It's Hype. It's not Hype. I'm not geeked up. Appreciate you hitting the button. Welcome to the How to Hustle podcast with Hype. This is episode 88. You follow me on Instagram and Twitter at I am Hype. This is H Y M P E. It's Hype. It's not Hype. I'm not geeked up. Second appearance on the podcast from my special guest in the building this week. Introduce yourself to the audience. Hey guys, how you doing? That's your girl Barbie from Let Me Touch You podcast. Happy to be here again. Ha ha. Apparently, I'm the only one she's recording with right now. <laughs> <laughs> Now, yes, you are. You're special to me. Copy that. We're going to hit the rundown now. E Block Radio Network every Monday, 2 p.m. on the E Block Radio Network. Tuesdays, 2 p.m. GFT Radio Network. Wednesdays, 216 to blend, 12 30. I mean, 12 o'clock midnight, 8 a.m., 8 p.m. They love me over there. Three times they playing me. Tuesday, Thursdays is WTNUPhilly.com every 12 30 on Thursdays, WTNUPhilly.com. I say podcast radio network every Friday at 10 a.m. THC Media every Saturday at 10 a.m. Sundays are wide open West Coast. What's up, y'all? We need to get something out on the West Coast. California love. What's up? I got niggas out there. I need a station, y'all. What's up? Um, H2H Cleaning is my cleaning company. H2H Cleaning at H2H Cleaning on Instagram only. Uh, plumbing, roof at, uh, plumbing, roofing, HVACs, cleanups, cleanouts, uh, flooring, carpeting, you name it, we can make it happen. Uh, it's a tri-state area situation, but if Barb needs something out there in NY done, I will slide. We will make that happen. Um, that. Now, Custom Hustle. Custom Hustle is the name of my clothing line. It's at Custom Hustle World on Instagram, Custom Hustle Co. on Twitter. Custom jerseys, jackets, sweatsuits, t-shirts. Uh, you can get your logo on your name or whatever you want on your sweatsuit. It will cost you extra. But other than that, you can get a nice, very beautiful Custom Hustle logo on your sweatsuit, your hoodie, sweatpants, however you want to make that situation happen. The jackets you design yourself, the jerseys you pretty much design yourself. However you need it customized, we can make it happen. And yes, we have the baby situations and the children. Locked and loaded for all of those things. Now, episode 88. Barb, you ready? I'm ready. Okay. What is a parenting break? People have been talking about this shit all the time. Like, I need a break from these kids. I got to get away from this. I have no idea what the fuck they are talking about. So please, if you could explain or elaborate or help me out with this. What is a parenting break? I'm going to tell you what I fantasize about a parenting break because I don't know what the heck it is either. I'm with my kids 24-7. My oldest is 18. Never, I've never gotten a break. Long story short, I've never gotten a break. So what I do fantasize, and I'll say for the past five years, I've been planning this and haven't done it yet, is to rent a room for a weekend, have some wine, order some food, watch some Law and Order, some gangster movies, and just eat, sleep, drink, and enjoy a long time with no one saying mommy no one saying i'm hungry no one what are you doing what are you watching i love my kids guys i have four kids i love them dearly but to me that is what a break would be but is that ever gonna happen i don't think so if you disappear for a weekend and leave an 18 year old with the crib what do you think it's gonna look like when you get back (laughs) it's gonna look crazy and right now, even if I wanted to do it, my 18-year-old just moved to Buffalo for college, so I can't even do that. But if he were here and if I was to do it, yeah, I'll come back to a disaster. Yeah. All right. Um, so the better question to kind of ask here should have been, should we have a parenting break? Because I'm not really sure what the hell this parenting break situation is. Like, you don't get a break. Your mom didn't get a break. Your grandma didn't get a break. There are no breaks to be gotten. Guess what you signed up for when you decided to have it raw? You decided to sign up for a lifetime of mom, what you doing? Dad, can I? Look, I can jump. I can spin. I can twirl. What you watching? What you eating? Why are you thinking? Why is it quiet? You decided to sign up for all of those things when you decided to have kids. There is no break from it. There's no walking away from this. Like, you get to walk away and get your break when you go to the bathroom if you lock the door. Because if you don't, don't they come in. That. 
if mm-hmm. you don't lock the door, they're coming in. I said lock the door. You just closed it or left it open. You was asking for it. <laughs> but when you're making your commute to and from work, that is the you time that you got. So if you know if I make a left over here, I can get stuck in 20 minutes of traffic. You need to be making that left so that you can get that yeah. 20 minutes to your damn self. You don't take the fastest route home because guess what happens when you get there? You got homework to do like you're back in the third grade. Okay, you got a probably a science project. You got to make dinner. And if you got a significant other, yeah, we got to get sexy. Like, so <laughs> there is no break. Like, I don't know you why people like keep my mom. saying this. I don't know why my people keep saying that. this shit, man. Because I'm not going to lie. You know, um, I do say it all the time. I need a break. And it's not necessarily like a break from the kids only. It's more for my mental health. You know, sometimes you just need a breather. Like, no one talking to you sometimes you just even it's just fun if it's not only for an hour to sit in silence to gather my thoughts I'm satisfied with that but realistically like you said we decided to have kids they're our responsibility we can't depend on anyone to sit here and pick them up just so we can get this break that we feel we need this is the thing that we that we are uh, exactly we don't accept the circumstances that we have. Now, the only people who are obligated to these children are the mom and the dad. Grandmom is not obligated to keep them every day. Auntie or whoever is watching them are not obligated to keep them every day or every other mm-hmm. day or for six hours or whatever. Or like you said, just so I can get an hour of quiet. When you decided to have them, you decided that noise and shit being the way that I don't want it to be is what I'm signing up for. That's the thing that like we just can't accept. And I don't know why we can't accept it. Like I always tell, like, I ain't never got a problem taking my kids. I never got a problem sitting here with them. Sure, I don't want to watch Coca Melon again. <laughs> sure, I don't want to watch Bubble Guppies again. Sure, I shouldn't know these songs, but I know them. But yep. that's what I signed up for. That's what I agreed to. That was the fine print in the contract that you didn't read. Like you yeah, have so, a you have a few years here where it ain't about you, and yeah. you have to accept that. And if you can't accept it, it ain't about you. Then you gonna have a problem with this shit forever. Not even a few years, like from the moment you become a parent, that's it. Because no matter how well, old yeah, you never are, be yeah you because copy you never stop becoming a you never stop being a parent. But once you get to like you said, even then it's just different now because like you say he's eighteen and went off to college. Now it's a different worry because now I can't yeah. see you. Now, I don't know what you're doing. Now, that's a different type of anxiety or worry than just, Mm -hmm. oh, my God, they're going off to daycare type of thing. But once you have them and send them out into the world, like the first couple of years, it's it's all about shaping their mind and molding them and making them into a decent little person and Mm -hmm. dealing with all the bullshit that goes with it. (laughs) But once they get a certain age, it's like, okay, he could watch himself. She could sit in here by herself. Like... Now I can breathe. Now I can get that hour. But like I said, you want that hour? Drive the long way home. Like, <laughs> Or what I would say is you're, you know, in a relationship, if you were your significant other, work something out. Have a schedule. You know, if this weekend you want to go out with the guys, go ahead, go out with the guys. I'll stay home with the kids. That way you can have your youth time. Next weekend, I'll go out with the girls. Have at least one weekend for you. That way you won't get overwhelmed. Why are you looking like that? It sounds good, but it's not realistic. It's, hey, girl, sounds beautiful. One thing we know is communication is how any relationship works. That yeah. there is the relationship between two dogs is communication. All right. Mm-hmm. The problem in them situations be we all make the selfish decision. It's easy for us to say like, all right, on the 15th, I'm going out. On the 22nd, you going out. Until you start to get out that damn door on the 22nd and I ain't going nowhere. Now I'm stuck in the house with these kids. Now either he or she, because let's not just make this a she thing. Niggas do this too. Mm -hmm. Now we're going to start a whole argument. Now you're going to keep calling me while I'm out having my me time. I didn't call you last week. I let you do you. (laughs) Now you want to keep trying to interrupt mine. Now you want to keep having an argument. Now you want to keep making it something else. Or you went out Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, and then got mad and that I asked much. you. Yes, but some people, when you're making the selfish decision, and again, it's not accepting the circumstances that you have. You signed up for this. Like, yeah. this is the decision that you made. 
This is the yeah. fine print on the contract that you just didn't read, but this is what it is. And at the end of the day, like we both sat here and had these kids. For me, for example, I'm a single mom. I do everything alone for all for my kids. I'm one that I don't like meeting anyone. So I can be going crazy with my kids and I would not ask for help, right? But lately it's been so much because like you said, now that my oldest is over there, it's a different anxiety that I'm dealing with. So I'm dealing with an 18-year-old that's out in Buffalo on his own, a 14-year-old that just started high school, that he never took public transportation before he has to take public transportation to get to school. And the that's twins that are seven. Anxiety. <laughs> yeah. And out here in New York, like every day somebody's getting killed in the train station. So I'm dealing with all these three stages at once, plus my personal stuff. So the other day, I honestly like pushed my pride to the side and I called the twin father and I was like, I need your help. And Excuse my mom for like screaming was... in the background. She's very high. <laughs> <laughs> he was like, and he looked at me like, cause we were on a FaceTime call. He was like, are you okay? I was like, no, I'm overwhelmed. I said, like, and it's not fair that once again, because, you know, the boys have a different father, the twins have a separate father. I said, it's not fair that once again, I'm putting all of this on my plate to avoid feeling vulnerable. I said, this time around, I'm not going to do it. I said, I need you to be present fully. This might sound messed up. You can have your opinion on it. Everybody else can as well. But I was like, you're either going to be there fully or I'm not going to let you be there at all. I don't need no part-time dad. So it's either you in or you out. And like, he's so quiet. And he was like, you know what? You're right. He was like, starting next week. Let's see, guys. Let's see this week. I'll give you an update. He's like, starting next week, I'll help you. I'll pick them up. up. I'll pick them up from school, take them to you. And on Saturdays, I'll pick them up for a couple of hours. I was like, all right, I'm good with that. Let's see. So the thing here, the thing there, it's not even like the uh, it's not even like a personal attack on your situation because you don't got to want to give our, our her life stories on these. Let's leave some mystery. Um, mm-hmm. The situation in some of these be that either the guy or the girl can't accept whoever's like the one that, like you said, I'm the primary caregiver for our kids. I remember growing up, my cousin had his kids. He had his, what was it, uh, four of them. He had the kids when mom left. So like mm-hmm. the situations work out both ways where People will be like, I can't accept the fact that you get to walk in and out of here whenever you want, but I can't. And it's one of those things where we both know that it's wrong that he's doing it or that she's doing it. So if we both do it, don't the kids lose? Isn't it ultimately all about the kids being in the best space? The kids turning out to be better than I am. The kids being set up to be able to be off in college by yourself on the subway by yourself going to school and like it's all about what's best for them and the problem mm-hmm. that we get in these situations is if we both don't understand that or if we're both not living that we can both understand it and still just say oh well i'm doing whatever i want anyway that'd be the problem the problem like we gotta gotta again it's always about accepting the situation that you have once you accept the circumstances for what they are then you will be doing a lot better with that situation now so what you're saying is like I said, I don't know what Kim said, like what that is, but it's yeah. one thing to people always like tense up on is when they ask you, are you okay? And you say no. Mm-hmm. Cause every time somebody asks you, the first thing people always say, Hey, what's up? I'm doing terrible. How you been? Bad. Mm-hmm. It, what do you mean bad? You supposed to just say, yeah. And we moved on. That's like yeah. a transition. That's like a, just a transition. Mm-hmm. Thing. Like You're not supposed to be doing bad. It's one thing I always tell people about um, not to make it doom and gloom, but I'm not, I'm not afraid of death type of guy. My dad passed and I told people that whole, cause Muslims genazas happened in two, three days later. So when people say, oh, how you doing? Terrible. And I don't want to talk about it. Yeah. That shuts everybody down from asking you anything about this. Cause mm-hmm. they don't know how to handle this now. Yeah. So now, like you said, I'm having a spot where like, yeah, you can get overwhelmed. Shit can be too much. And you could just be like, damn, I just need to take a deep breath. Like you said, I just need 10 minutes of quiet. And sometimes mm-hmm. dealing with these kids or dealing even in a relationship, like it's just never quiet. And right now, I just needed to be quiet. So if you tell this motherfucker, yo, I need you to step up and do your part. I don't even need you to do the whole part. I just need you to do something. You're not doing yeah. anything with it. <laughs> yeah, because I work from home. So um, in the mornings, what I do is 
in order to get the kids, the twins to school in time and get back to clock in in time, I have to take cabs, take a cab to drop them off the school, same cab, I come back. And then in the afternoon, my sister picks them up and then I'll have to take a cab to go to her house to pick them up when he can easily pick them up from school and bring them to me. So if you can help a little bit, help. I shouldn't have to tell you to do that. But since it, you're the type of person that needs the guidance, I'm going to guide you and tell you I need you to do this. When it comes to your Saturdays being off, only a couple hours. That's all I need. And me telling him, explain it, because I know some of the guys must be like, she's bugging, you're either in or you're not. Consistency is key. The same way us as adults, we need consistency. The kids deserve it as well. Because the twins, I have a boy and a girl, especially girls. I don't need my daughter to think that it's okay for a man to be flip floppy in her life. A lot of our relationships for Not females, we built it. We built it on our experience with our dads, and then the that's boys the first build person, it. That's the person yeah. who's supposed to show you what love looks like. Exactly. That's a whole. Another that's thing. a whole never. That's a whole never topic because, like, yeah. that be my thing. I got two daughters, so it's like. The example that I'm supposed to say, the bad part be when you know, like, damn, your mom and your dad really was doing a good job with you and you just ain't shit as a child. <laughs> like, yeah, that's a whole different story. Like, <laughs> that'd be like, damn, not to be shit. so like, you're like, yeah, like, I was talking about this to somebody the other day. It's like, yo, his mom is a nurse, his dad owned a construction company and you got a pound of weed. What are you doing? Like, you don't need to be hustling. What are you doing? Yeah. Like, he wanted to be the rebel. He wanted to be the rebel. Yeah, but your situation ain't that. Again, it's not accepting your circumstances. Accept the fact that your shit was cool and that your shit wasn't bad, like your yeah. cousins or like your homie. Like, accept the fact that shit is cool. It's cool for shit to be cool. That'd be one thing mm-hmm. that we can't never get to too. Like, it's cool for things not to be chaotic. It's cool for things to just run smoothly. It's cool for us to be happy. Like. But sometimes that's so not normal to us that when we get a little bit of it, we don't know how to act with it and we tend to mess it up. Again, we go off topic because this is a whole other yeah. discussion. But you <laughs> say you stay tuned. Okay, Barb's so only back- with, she's only recording with me right now. So you know what I'm saying? We can be able to <laughs> dive back into these other things later on. Yeah, we definitely will. But back to, you know, needing the space, right? Another advice that I would give people is talk to your kids. You know, kids, they are little people that understand. If I'm overwhelmed and the kids are, mommy this, mommy that, I tell my kids, listen, I need a break. I need a minute. I need you to go to your room, watch TV. I need to just sit here alone for a couple of minutes. And once I'm better, I'll call you and I'll let you know when you can come back and finish the conversation. And they're good. My twins are seven. Ever since they were like maybe four, I started doing that with them because again, it was only me. I couldn't call daddy or call, like you said, my mother, it's not her responsibility. So I had to make it work. And the best way to do it was to have that open line of communication with my kids. All four of my kids know I suffer from depression. When I'm feeling down and out, they already know. It's like, mommy's not feeling good today. Let's leave her alone. Communication is key. If you want things to work, you got to communicate. It's crazy. You just took it here and this is what I was about to about to say this, I don't want nobody listening to this episode and be like, like you said, I got I got a problem with depression. Or some people are just more emotional than others. They like they're more susceptible to lean toward their emotions of like I'm overwhelmed and like I can't catch my breath type of thing. Some people mm-hmm. is just like I can sweep it all under the rug. I can deal with it. I can deal with it. And I don't want nobody to hear this and be like, what we're saying here is just like push down all of your, like, suppress all of the shit that's bothering you in this situation when, like you said, it gets to be too much and all of that. Find ways to give yourself wins is what I'm saying in this Mm -hmm. situation. Like I said, you know if you go left instead of right on your way home, it's going to give you another 20 minutes. Take that 20 minutes. You know when you go to the bathroom, (laughs) like, lock the door, okay? I have to start doing that. I never lock it. When you go take your shower, don't be in there taking, unless you got like a baby, a little infant where you got to take the quick joint just to get in and out and get it done. Stand there and let the water hit yourself for a minute. These are your moments to yourself. This is your time to yourself. Your time to yourself ain't going to be you get to go to the bar like you, you get to go to the bar and have three drinks. Or like you said, I get to spend the weekend at the spa or at the hotel mm-hmm. watching all the six shows on my DVR that I never got to. 
That's not mm-hmm. the situation that we all have. That's not the situation that we all get presented. It was like you said, I got four kids. Like I said, my cousin, he had four of his kids. So it ain't going to be a situation where every day you're going to get that time to yourself. But that commute is your time. Take advantage of it. Turn the radio off and just have some silence. Pull yeah. the fuck over and just sit there for a minute. Like, walk mm-hmm. instead of, like you said, you took the cab. I'm going to just walk today because it's nice and I'm chilling. Like, yeah, I wish those... I could walk. I mean, yeah, some people, sometimes yeah, it's too yeah, fast. Yeah, some, yeah mm-hmm. some of them situations be, if you're going 12 miles across town, then yeah, don't listen to that. But mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, like, you got a chance to have these small wins, but as long as you continue to fight the circumstances that you have, then you will forever have this problem. If you don't accept that this is what the hell it is, and I got to find a way to adjust to it because it ain't going to adjust to me. Exactly. Another simple thing you could do is put the bed, the kids to bed a little earlier. You stay up a little more later. <laughs> My Watch TV. <laughs> <laughs> or set your alarm an hour earlier. Before the we time you be, normally wake up the kids. We will be, be in a fist time. fight till one in the morning. <laughs> she ain't going setting, down easy. Setting the alarm an hour earlier than you usually wake up the kids. If you usually wake up the kids by six, make sure you're up an hour before that. You could take your nice long bubble bath. Enjoy your coffee without rushing. So, you know, get the kids ready for school. Do Time management is another thing. Manage your time properly. That way you can have some sort of free time for you throughout the day and like you said you just got to make it work yeah like i said you got to take those small wins them small them small wins all ate up to the win that you was looking to get they all look to get to that mm-hmm. same result but like i said it's not going to be i'm at happy hour on thursday and friday i'm at two oh, for man. 20s on you know what i'm saying i'm at the two for 20 on tuesday it's not the way that this is working if that's what you wanted to do, then you should have strapped up that night that you went in there with that nigga. <laughs> Listen, Friday night, my friends were calling me. They were FaceTiming me. They were all at the bar together. They're like, yo, B, come on. We'll pay for your Uber. I wanted to cry. I was like, I can't go. My son, my oldest son, my 14-year-old, he stood over at my mother's house. So what was I going to do? Like at 11 o'clock, wake up the twins and be like, mom, you want to babysit for a couple hours? No. I still home. Poured myself some honey with some passion fruit juice, and I just started watching the basketball game. You know, made it work for me. I enjoyed my night that way. That's why I'm saying you take them small wins when you got them. All right, bet I got one of these little niggas out of the crib. Bet that's one down. <laughs> yeah. And also, another thing is if you're feeling overwhelmed, where you're feeling like, you know, you just can't do it anymore, because I've had my moments where I'll sit and cry. You shouldn't let it get to that point. If you do have someone that you can count on, it doesn't hurt to ask for help. Ask for it. The most you might get is a no. I know it might bother you that you're going to get a no, but you have to remember they're not obligated to do these things for you. But if you need an hour, half an hour, you have someone that doesn't live too far from you, a close friend, relative that you trust for your children, give them a call and be like, listen, I need a breather. Just an hour. You think you can hold down the kids? If they say, yeah, great. They say no, you have to understand. The thing about that is, though, this is how I always look at all of that. What's the worst thing somebody going to say to you, no? Mm-hmm. Like, I can't, how many nights did you go out and, like, damn, it just ain't hitting for me tonight. I done cracked them 20 of them and ain't get nothing. It happens sometimes. Mm-hmm. But what's the worst that they going to tell you, no? <laughs> like, yeah. They're not going to ruin my life. They're not going to ruin my whole situation. I'm not going to kill my confidence. They're not going to make me not ask the next person and the next one the next one but like you just said in this whole situation when you're dealing with your kids it'd be them trust situations of, i can't let my kid go over y'all house it'd be too like you got too many girlfriends you got too many boyfriends mm-hmm. y'all got too many uncles coming through there like yeah but my like you if it's not my mom or my sister or their father i'll stay home with the kids Yesterday, yeah, we got, my two we boys got decided to stay aunt. with my mom. The two boys decided to stay with my mom, and my daughter came home with me. If I wanted to, my mom would have been willing and able to babysit. You know, she would have stayed with my daughter too. But what I did, I was like, "Come on, Emma, it's gonna be girls' night." We painted some pumpkins. We watched some movies that she wanted to watch. We ordered Wendy's. It was girls' night. The money I'm gonna spend out on the streets, I'd rather spend it on my kids. Another thing. 
to look at. Like, do you want to go send money at the club? That money you could go Plus, towards the bill. It's copy. It's, I remember blowing the income tax check in a weekend, but that's a whole other story. It was pre kids and wife. Uh, shout out to my cousin. We had fun that weekend. <laughs> <laughs> so let's switch it up a little bit now. Dive a little bit into you. Uh, we have a brand new season that we just kicked off a few weeks back. What is it that we are expecting from this new season? Okay, so this new season is titled Attachment Styles. I've been working on myself. I'm on like a self-help journey where I'm trying to find the old me that I once was before my life became chaotic and I let the chaos control me. So I'm trying to find balance with everything. So I'm glad that we did this episode because it fit right in. Does it fit into how I looked at the balance of things, how I figured things out instead of just sitting there moping and crying about shit that only I could fix. So with this- It's like, it's like I planned it out that way, isn't it? It, it is, yeah. It was, I'm telling you, it was meant to be. It's meant to be. When you hit me up, I was like, I ain't recording no, with nobody. No offense to no one. But I'm, you know, I'm working hard on my season, so I'm focused. But when you hit me up, I can't say no to you. You're like the only person I can't say no to. So this season... I get that that a lot. I'm a pretty charming guy. (laughs) So this season is basically about knowing your attachment style. So there's three different attachment styles. There's anxious, avoidant, and secure. And knowing your attachment style helps you learn who you are. And it helps you figure out why you are the way you are, why you love the way you love. It just falls into everything. So the goal for this season is to help people figure out their style so they can know how to work on the things they feel they need to work on and that make themselves a better person. It's an amazing way you kind of do. I think the way you kind of do that is make an accurate assessment of yourself, make an honest Mm -hmm. and accurate assessment of yourself. If you are out of shape, when you look in the mirror, you can't go, man, that is a six pack. Like it doesn't work that way. You got to look in there and be honest and keep it real with yourself. Because if you can't keep it real with you, how you can keep it real with me? And exactly. you can't worry about what other people are seeing when they see you. Because like we just was talking about this earlier before we started. Nothing is worse than you being in your own way. Mm-hmm. But you have to make a strong, accurate assessment of what it is that you are and what it is that you have in that mirror when you're making it. Listen, there was a point in time where my bad, the cash app is popping. <laughs> there was a point in time where it was like that for me. I'll give you a huge example. My hair. I'm one that every week nonstop I would go get my hair done, right? And my mom has been processing my hair, relaxing my hair since I was young. And faithfully, every three months, I would get my relaxer because I just didn't feel right unless my hair was relaxed. And right now I'm going through the whole natural process. I'm letting it grow out. The old me, hell to the no, I would not be caught with my hair in a ponytail, bun, nothing. It always had to be straight down. And I realized that I've become like so dependent on what this whole image that people have of me that it was dumb. It was just stupid. I was just doing all these things to keep up an image that people had that doesn't even matter. Because at the end of the day, I'm not loving myself, it doesn't matter. That's what I'm about to say. Like, you can't be worrying about. I want to do something to make everybody else happy, but I don't even really like it myself. So mm-hmm. what the hell are you doing that for? Who are you here to impress? Other people or yourself? <laughs> exactly. I was killing my hair. My hair wasn't growing, nothing. And now it's growing, and I'm feeling better. You know? Got a little hang time going. <laughs> just don't get none of them, don't get none of them old school AI. So just, just let's not do that. <laughs> <laughs> So, but the, the, the book is really good. It starts off with um, a quiz that you have to take on yourself that, once again, like you said, you have to be open and honest with those questions, and it helps you dive into stuff. You it's, got any of those questions from this quiz that you remember offhand? I remember offhand, no, but don't make me pull out my book. I got it right now. <laughs> so what you're saying is we can come back, use this quiz, and we can do this as an episode. We definitely can. Copy that. So, you know what I'm saying? 
you see how things always roll together, baby. Marketing and promotion is how we make all these things happen with relationship building. Things that we taught on how to hustle seminars, which can still be purchased. If you just DM me at I am hype, you can get all five parts of the series, or you can just get them one at a time. However, you would like to make that situation happen. Um, last thing before we go, before we wrap this one up right now, while working on yourself, what is the Mm. what's the hardest thing that you've touched on so far? The hardest thing is being consistent because I have been going through some issues on Instagram. Someone has been flagging um, clips that I've been posting and it has been discouraging me. So the past couple of weeks, my consistency has just been like down the drain. By the way, this season, I'm working with Sal from The Brunch Hour and Jay Christian from the Cognac Room Podcast. They've been my co-hosts this season. Jay is a life coach. So, like, he gives great advice on whatever topic he's talking about. But consistency is the main thing because I've been so discouraged with that. It's just like, why? I don't understand why people take time out to do shit like that. Like, we're all supposed to be out here supporting one another. Boom. Something they- great. Mm, 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 mm. There's there you go That's right it, there. Right? We yeah. are not all out here supposed to be positive. There when in any religious text to tell you in the beginning of time, okay, there were uh Cain and Abel who went back and forth with each other. There has always been a situation where somebody has been there to create mischief and fuck things up. If we were all supposed to be on the straight and narrow, how boring would life be? If everybody was going nine to five, clock in and out, and I'll be in the house yeah. with my kids. That's not the way things are supposed to be. So this is the false premise that we all set up for ourselves going, we all supposed to be supporting each other. No, the fuck we ain't, because some people are not doing good work that you don't want to support. Some people mm-hmm. are making the genre bad for us all, okay? <laughs> Giving us all a bad Unfortunately. Mm-hmm. So... We can't say we all supposed to do X, Y, and Z because that ain't what we all here for. Some people are here just to fuck up the whole thing. Yeah. It's true. And with this season, I kid you not, it's been like hiccup after hiccup after hiccup. It's been so much things that I've been dealing with. Kids and I caught COVID. My youngest son caught meningitis. He was admitted in the hospital. It's been nonstop. A whole bunch of things that Another person will get discouraged and be like, you know what, forget it. I can't focus this season. But, you know, I'm going through so much with my family. But podcasting is my escape. Podcasting is my therapy. So I can't let it go because this right here is my me time. It's a time that I have to speak to someone that I know is actually interested in listening to what I have to say and can give me, you know, any type of advice, constructive criticism that I may need. So... In life, you're going to get a whole bunch of things that are going to discourage you, like you said, but you got to make time for the things you love. And here we are. Copy that. And that's how we're going to wrap up episode 88 of How to Hustle Podcast for Hype. Appreciate y'all hitting the button. Bart, appreciate you coming on. We are out. Appreciate you hitting the button. Welcome to the How to Hustle Podcast with Hype. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at I am Hype. That's H Y M P E. It's Hype. It's not Hype. I'm not geeked up.